Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, I mean over the top beautiful, Monday morning here in the collapse of global industrial civilization and another 80 degree December day here in the Point Lonesome Swamp in the Oasis of Freedom. <clears throat> and it is Monday, December 13th, 2021, I believe, and I uh, got a big day ahead, so I have just enough time to squeeze in uh, <coughs> the latest uh, Doomsday Sermon, I guess, that several alert readers obviously have sent me this one and before every Doomer on every Doomer channel gets to it, we're going to check in with our old buddy Umer Hake. I've never heard this dude's last name pronounced. H-A-Q-U-E. I'm figuring Hake. I don't know. I've never talked to Umer, but uh, what is on Umer's mind today? Well, it is catastrophe is what is on Umer's mind on this beautiful day. And squirrelies are on the mind of the little dog, so. Uh. But anyway, I have a, I have 18 yards of uh, sand and gravel showing up here any, uh, at any point. So I hope I get to, uh, I hope I get to finish the story about catastrophe before the truck full of gravel shows up. Take it away, Umer Hake. <clears throat> Catastrophe is the new normal. Are we ready? What life will be like in an age where catastrophe is the new normal? Yes. Uh, normal is over. The age of normal is finished. Done. A relic of history things will not go back to normal. Yes. Uh, from here, societies only grow more unstable, economies more depressed, nations more fractured, and lives, yours and mine, more surreal, difficult, and troubled. There is not going to be a return to yesterday's normal if by that we mean something like stable, prosperous societies, steadily growing economies, and smoothly functioning nations. That was the rich world, and even in the poor one, normal is over too. The idea that you can get rich by simply selling stuff to the already rich world, like South Korea did or China tried, that is long gone too. The effects of Corona Panic are going to last for much of the rest of the next decade. We're already two years into the Corona Panic and a new variant has emerged. The lesson is simple. Try to go back to normal. Bang, you're done. <clears throat> the rest of our lives are going to be much like the last six months. We are explorers in uncharted territory right about now. How are we to survive things like pandemics, climate change, ecological collapse, mass extinction, and the shattering waves of depression, upheaval, and panic <clears throat> those unleash. Corona panic is just a warm-up, a drill, a very, very tiny taste of the rest of your life. I cannot believe it. Umer Hake is sounding more and more like Sam Mitchell that compared to what is coming down the pike over the next few years and decades relative to what is coming down the pike, the corona panic 
by comparison is a bad hair day. <clears throat> what is going to change over the next few decades? What is not is the better question. Now bear with me, this next part will be a little scary, but stick it out until the end. Let me give you a small example. July was the world's hottest month on record <coughs> globally. <clears throat> By 2030, climate change is going to go from intense to catastrophic. What is that going to do to you? There you are, already struggling to eke out a living like the average American, 80% of whom now live paycheck to paycheck, unable to save a penny, dying in debt, they have never been able to pay off their whole lives long. You might think, well, climate change can't make my life any worse, more unstable, more anxious. What's the big deal? You would be wrong. Right about now, you pay something like a quarter of your income for utilities. Water, maybe 5%, electricity, another 5%, insurance, another 5%, and so forth. Fast forward a decade. The world is now running out of water, clean air, livable temperatures. Guess which bills suddenly spike? Your water bill now comes to 20% of your income. Your electricity bill, you've got to run extra ACs now, night and day, comes to another 20%. Bang, there goes your life. You are already in perpetual unpayable debt. What's going to happen when the cost of the climate crisis lands squarely on your shoulders? Then one day you get a bill from the insurance company. Your home insurance premium is going up 50% a year, you realize, because of the risk of fire, flood, and quake. You feel a sudden urge of panic. Your income's been stuck most of your life. All your credit cards are perpetually maxed out. How are you to afford this? What do you do? <clears throat> I think, did you say that's in the next decade? Okay. By the 2040s, mass extinction will go from troubling to implosive. The world's great chains of life will begin to topple, keeling over at the base as the littlest things finally die off, taking everything else with them. There will be an intense, terrible struggle to keep humanity fed, watered, clean, and nourished. The fish don't clean the rivers anymore. Double whammy of no food, no water. The insects have stopped turning the soil. Quadruple whammy, less harvest, hotter temperatures, less water, less oxygen. It all seems abstract to you until you notice that food prices have been spiraling out of control, as have prices from, for everything from beer to juice. You used to spend somewhere between 25 and 50% of your income feeding your family, but now you can barely seem to accomplish that task on that much. To feed them well, you realize, over the last few years, you, you've had to spend much, much more. And what about all those air purifiers in your home? All those masks everyone wears. <clears throat> all those allergy pills you take, it all adds up, and you realize, horrified, that you're spending more than half your income now on such things. The things of basic sustenance, whether decent food, clean air, or drinkable water. No wonder you're so deep in debt. No wonder your debt rises every year. And when you think about your financial position, you have panic attacks! You're paying the price of mass extinction now, only you don't quite know it. And it has bankrupted you, which is why you survive on a life of credit 
This is uh, why you need to be burning up those credit cards. Uh, which is why you survive on a lifeline of credit, which if, it, if, which if that were to vanish, would leave you and yours destitute and starving in a matter of not even months, but weeks or days. By the 2050s, the final goodbye will begin. The Earth's great ecosystems will begin to die off irreversibly. The Amazon, the ocean currents, the glaciers and ice at the poles, all the great systems which keep life on planet Earth as we know it, breathing, eating, drinking, thriving, but that includes you too. Well, I'll be 91 in the year 2050. Hopefully, I'll be long gone. And this time, you know, in the 2050s, the effects are even more catastrophic. It's not just water and food bills which rise. Now there are mass shortages of things, of things you once took for granted. Feeling that already? <clears throat> that juice, that meat, that bread, it's not made anymore. It never will be again. The rich have it on the black market at extortionate prices. That kind of furniture, this kind of clothing, that kind of fabric, this kind of wood, bang, gone. It is now the stuff that billionaires keep under lock and key, a trophy that once used to be a mere struggling every day be a mere shrugging everyday good. Then there's medicine, drugs, pharmaceuticals. Without nature to provide, without nature to provide many of the basics, medicines to skyrocket in price, everything from simple ones to sophisticated ones, soon enough you're spending another huge chunk of income on that and you get medical insurance bills that make the 2020s look quaint. This is my, uh, excuse me, I need to take a, uh, yeah, I'm here, come on out. When do you think you'll be here? Uh, I'm leaving at the quarry right now. All right, I'll about get out there and open the gate for you. About 10, about 10 o'clock and I'll be there. All right, brother, see you then. Thanks. All right, that was my sand and gravel guy. I, I am buying truckloads of sand and gravel from the gravel pit while I still can. Yes. Then there are trucks full of sand. Anyway, <clears throat> without nature, such as this disappearing sand pit, 20 minutes from here, without nature to provide many of the basics, medicines to skyrocket in price. Everything from simple ones to sophisticated ones. Soon enough, you're spending another huge chunk of income on that, and you get medical insurance bills that make the 2020s look quaint. But it's hardly just medical insurance insurance of any kind seems to be a luxury now. Who is going to insure your home in an age where flood and fire are everyday realities? Who's going to insure your life when life expectancy is plummeting? Who's going to bother insuring you for anything at all when you are a pauper living on life support who doesn't have a hope of ever paying off your debts, and you can hardly afford insurance now anyways. Most of your income now goes to two things. One, the basics. Water, air, food, whether used for cleanliness, nourishment, or sanitation. Two, debt servicing. Even at a relatively low interest rate, you will never pay off what you owe. <clears throat> Meanwhile, Amazon and Google had not paid a penny in taxes for decades now. 
So who can fund a functioning society? You're spending everything you have on the basics. They are taking everything they can and stuffing it in their bank accounts. The result is that society's systems are now simply breaking down from health care to food to water to energy. You feel a sense of bitter dis uh, disappointment. It wasn't supposed to be like this. You try to calm yourself after a moment of seeing red. After all, you're smart enough to see the effects living at the edge of despair has had on society. Massive waves of people seem to have lost their minds. They cling to bizarre superstitions, spend all day in escapism, flee to conspiracy theories, or worst of all, join one of the many new doomsday cults flourishing everywhere. You remember hazily that people used to call the GOP a doomsday cult. It was just the beginning of one. Now there are vast networks of them, people who have given up on tomorrow. The skyrocketing suicide of the 2020s never stopped rising, you know, such as the one 50 feet from where I'm having this rant where we had a suicide here in the Point Lonesome Swamp. The skyrocketing suicide of the 2020s never stopped rising. Some days you understand the crushing, mind-numbing fear too. But the doomers, they are inconsequential in the end. <laughs> They're already inconsequential, brother. Living without any hope in the future constantly getting poorer with no end in sight, it has created a new politics of fascism, a politics where people are happy to die as long as their tribe prevails. Again, remember this is the 2050s we are talking about. Politics is now a brutal contest of power. Which tribe can seize this last morsel of water, air, and food. Men with guns roam your streets. You don't venture out much. You try to make sense of it all. They belong to this faction, that faction. Which one should you join? The idea of rule of law seems to be a quaint, distant memory. You have to look out for yourself and your own. The tribes distribute these last few resources according to their hierarchies, which, in which the most violent rise to the top. You have never been that kind of person. What hope is there for you in a world where only the brutal, cruel, selfish, and stupid seem to thrive? How can you protect your kids and raise them well or even care for them much at all now? As civilization's basic systems have begun to fail, so too have the everyday systems they depend on. Kids going to school need clean air, water, food, energy. All those things are in short, short supply now. Who can afford to run a world-class school system when the prices of those basics have spiraled out of control? Your kids go to school some days, but it is a charade, a place they stay busy, maybe out of trouble for a while. What happens, you wonder, if you need health care? If a school needs clean air, water, food, a hospital does too, all the more so, and then some. It needs medicine, a constant dependable supply of energy, sanitation, hygiene, but all those things too seem to be vanishing. There are brownouts now, days when the water just stops flowing, days when the smog is so bad you can barely leave the house. 
you can go to the hospital, sure, but like the school, it is a barely functional, decrepit place, a broken system. You're probably better off at home, you realize, taking your chances. After all, at least at home, you won't get infected by any of these strange new diseases ripping through society. What had begun to happen in the first decades of the 21st century, it later emerged was a trend. Ebola, SARS, MERS, Corona panic, zoonotic viruses, they weren't an anomaly, but another kind of catastrophe. As humanity had encroached on nature, its poor and hungry ripping came in contact with, ate, drank, touched wildlife anew, and diseases crossed the species barrier like a great river. It seemed there was a new one every decade. Corona panic had been a shock, but only because it was the first one. Now the world was used to them, and the truth was that the world in 2020 had been both richer and had more willpower to fight. Now people just shrugged and went about their business. You took your chances. The world had grown poorer. People's spirits had broken. Life had become a bitter, brutal contest for self-preservation. It was you against everyone else. You woke up and had one job. Try to acquire the basics for your family to survive this day, this week, from anyone and everyone else. How were you going to get water, food, air? Economists put that in a different way. The global economy had now become a zero-sum game for basics, sustenance and nourishment, hygiene and cleanliness and sanitation, health, money to pay off the interest on the debt without which you would not have credit and then you would die. Everyone competed against everyone else every day for these basic things. Why? Because the globe had underinvested during humanity's most critical period. Damn it! I don't know how to shut this thing off. Anyway. Why? Shut up! Because the globe had underinvested during humanity's most critical period, instead of three massive historic waves of investment, the first to fight climate change, the second to fight mass extinction, and the third to fight ecological collapse, all those catastrophes had come true, and so had their side effects, which ranged from economic depression to social upheaval to pandemics. Things like working financial, social, economic systems, banks, hospitals, schools, and jobs, a distant memory of better times. Now, life was just this endless combat for survival. The world had not learned the lesson of the rich country which had become a poor one, the powerful one which had ended up a failed state. The world had gone American. It had become poor, broken, dysfunctional, and proud of it in many places. It was now incapable of taking any kind of collective action at all. Predatory elites laughed and profited from the ruin. The poor begged the rich to be their servants. A new feudal aristocratic economy had emerged in which collapse 
peasantry and extinction serfdom were the new bitter realities. Poverty, despair, ruin were watchwords. Nations imploded as politics became self-destruction, and those were the lucky ones. The unlucky ones descended into chaos, a free-for-all of every person for themselves by way of nihilism, theocracy, fascism, and hate just like America had in the 2030s. There you were, the average person trapped in this vicious cycle of self-preservation, too poor, weary, and broke now to do anything but watch in panic, in fear, in fury as a new dark age fell and one by one the lights of civilization went out. I know the above is scary, but my point is not to scare you. It's to say that there are profound changes to come over the next three decades, some of the greatest in human history. We can be proactive and take it upon ourselves to make those changes in manageable ways, or those changes can and will be forced upon us in ways that we are unlikely to be able to cope with. Corona panic is just one such change, but there are many more on the way as climate change, mass extinction, and ecosystem collapse unleash waves of depression, upheaval, and dislocation to rival history's greatest catastrophes over and over again. So do not consider this a prophecy. Consider it a warning. Thank you, Umer Haik, uh, for uh, starting off this absolutely spectacularly gorgeous day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. But I have got to wrap this up because I have 18 yards, a truck, a giant truck full of 18 yards of sand and gravel, what used to be probably a gopher tortoise colony, uh, heading down my road to fix the potholes in my road. While I still can, I highly advise you to fix the potholes in your road while you still can. My guys.